Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are uh, discussing the Frank Starling Law of the Heart. Okay, so we've discussed that the Frank Starling Law of the Heart is that if you stretch a cardiac muscle cell, uh, then what's going to happen is that the force with which that cardiac muscle cell will contract is going to get greater. And I should stress that this is within physiological limits. Obviously, if you stretch a cardiac muscle cell enough, it will just tear in two, and that's not going to result in an increase in the force with which it contracts. So it's a physiological stretch, a reasonable stretch, not an unphysiological stretch. Okay, right. So if we want to try and understand why this occurs, we need to look at the structure of a cardiac muscle cell. So what we're doing is we're going to the wall of the left ventricle and we're going to chop out a little cardiac muscle cell, a cardiomyocyte, from the left ventricle and we're going to look at its structure. Okay, so let's put uh, the cardiac muscle cell here. Right, so cardiac muscle cells have a sort of uh, a cylindrical structure, but we're just seeing a 2D image of it, so we're just seeing a um, square, oh, well, a rectangle. Right. Okay, so cardiac muscle cells are a form of striated muscle cells. Now, what does this mean? Well, skeletal muscle cells are also known as striated muscle cells. And basically, it refers to the fact that if you look down uh, a microscope at a cardiac muscle cell or a skeletal muscle cell, which this is, this is a cardiac muscle cell or a cardio uh, myocyte for short, cardiac myocyte will have. Okay, so we're somewhere in between. Um, if we look down this at the, under a light microscope, what we'll see is a banded appearance. I'll draw it down here. So if we, this is a smaller image of our cardiomyocyte because I want to use this for something else in a moment. I want to use this for a more detailed drawing. But basically, if we look down this car, at this cardiomyocyte under a light microscope, then what we'll see is we'll see bands. So let me show these bands. You'll see a band like that, a dark band. Then you'll have a light band again. And then another dark band, like so. Okay? And then maybe another dark band. Okay. And then a light band. So you see alternating dark and light bands. And those are called the striations. And therefore, the cardiac muscle cell is said to be striated. So... These dark bands here, they are known as the A bands, okay? And A stands for anisotropic, okay? So anisotropic bands. The light bands of the cardiac muscle cell, those are known as the I bands. So this is an I band. And I stands for isotropic. So I is equal to isotropic. So, let's now discuss the uh, microscopic structures uh, within the cardiac muscle cell that actually result in these striations. And basically, it is uh, the um, contractile machinery within the cell that produces this striated appearance. So, let's have a look at the contractile machinery that you find within cardiomyocytes, uh, which produces these striations. And the contractile machinery is known as sarcomere. So a contractile unit is a sarcomere. So let me show you the structure of a sarcomere. So we'll start with our sarcomere and we'll put it in here, basically. Right, so these two edges of the sarcomere, those are known as the Z lines or also the Z discs. So I'll draw a larger picture of this structure here. So remember that this picture is a 2D slice. So on the 2D slice, these structures look like lines. However, in 3D, they are actually discs, which are just in the plane perpendicular to our image. So the disks are sitting within this plane perpendicular to the image. So I've tried to draw that with this um, slightly bigger picture here. I've tried to denote that it's a disk sort of sitting in that plane. Okay, and here's another disk. So you've got these two Z disks, which are just disks of protein which are sitting in the cytoplasm of the cell. Okay, and these are known as the Z disks. 
So where should I write this? These are Z disks, or you can also hear them referred to as Z lines. So they're called Z lines because if you look at the 2D picture, they're just lines. If you look at the 3D picture, however, they are disks, so they're more properly called Z disks. Now, what do the Z disks do? Well, basically, they have filaments attached to them. They have protein filaments attached to them. So here are some protein filaments attached to these Z disks, like so. Okay, and I'm drawing three of these protein filaments attached to each one. Uh, however, there will be far more than this in reality. That's just to keep the picture nice and simple. So we have these three filaments here and three filaments here, and that's a bit long that I've drawn them up there, but never mind. Right, so I'll colour these in bright green, I think. And these, basically, these protein filaments which are attached to the Z discs or the Z lines, these are what are known as actin filaments. And I'll show you the structure of an actin filament in a moment. So, I'm drawing a small picture that's within the cardiomyocyte and a larger picture down here. So let's now discuss what an actin filament actually is. So, an actin filament then. So actin is a protein, but it doesn't remotely look like a sort of strand as I've drawn it here. Actin proteins are little globules of proteins, little beads if you like. So you've got this little actin protein here. So how on earth does this make these strands that I've drawn here? Well, basically, what it does is it polymerizes together. So here's another actin monomer, and then you start growing this chain of actin monomers sitting side by side, basically. And when you make a chain like this, this is going to form a strand-like structure, and this is what an actin filament actually is. It's made up of loads of these actin monomers, as they're called, which is the actual actin protein. Uh, polymerized together to make an actin filament. So this is an actin monomer there. Okay, so I'll colour them all in green here. Right, so off these Z discs, what you have are loads of these actin filaments stretching outwards. Okay, right. Now let's talk about the next component of the sarcomere. Right, the next component of the sarcomere is that sitting in between these two Z discs with the actin filaments, you then have another protonaceous disc. So here is another protonaceous disc known as the M disc. So this here and this here, these are the M disc. Well, this is the M disc. Or it's also referred to just like the Z disc was also referred to as the Z line, it can also be referred to as the M line. So let me colour this in a certain colour. So we'll colour this in orange. Okay, so this is the M disc or the M line. Right, so in between two Z discs with their actin filaments stretching in towards this M disc, uh, you have this M disc. Right, now the M disc also has protein filaments attached to it. So let me draw these protein filaments. So here's one, here's another one, another one, and another one. And these protein filaments that are attached to the M disc, those overlap with these actin filaments attached to the Z disc. So here they are on this small picture. Now I'll draw these in blue. So what type of a protein filament is this? Well, these are the myosin filaments. So the Z discs have the actin filaments attached to them. The M disc has the myosin filaments attached to them. So these here in blue, these are myosin filaments. Okay, right. So let's have a look now at the structure of a myosin filament. So myosin, again, the actual myosin protein is very, very small. It's nothing like the size of these massive great myosin filaments. So if we draw the myosin protein, what it has is it looks like this. It has two regions, basically. It has a portion known as the fibrous tail here, and then it also has this head portion here. So this little bead structure si sticking out, this is the myosin head. Okay. 
and then it's also got this fibrous tail. So this is the structure of the myosin protein. So how does this assemble into myosin filaments? So basically what happens is again it polymerizes like actin polymerizes and what's going to happen is you're going to get another myosin protein and stick it on here another one which you'll stick on here like so, another one which you'll stick on here and you'll gradually build up this polymerization of these myosin proteins together to make a long fibrous myosin filament Okay, so these are all myosin proteins here, so I'll highlight them all in blue. Okay. Right, so, um, basically the myosin filaments that you have attached to this M disc, they're going to be oriented in the opposite directions. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, you'll see that these myosin heads that stick off from the fibrous tails, they stick off in a certain direction. So all of these ones here are sticking off in this direction. Now, basically, in these two myosin filaments, the ones on this side stretching towards this Z disc, and the ones on this side stretching towards this Z disc, you want the heads oriented towards the Z disc. So, the, one that, the myosin filament that I've drawn here would be what you're going to put on in this position here because the heads, therefore, are going to be pointing towards the said disc over here. But the myosin filaments that you're going to have on this side, they will need to be oriented in the opposite direction. So what you'll need to build is something that looks like this. You'll need the myosin heads oriented towards this said disc. So effectively, what you need to do is take this, rotate it around 180 degrees, and then attach it onto the said disc, like so. Okay, so that the myosin heads are always oriented towards the said disc. Now, this structure is what is known as a sarcomere. The entire thing from this said disc to this said disc, this is a sarcomere. So let me just label this up. So this is a sarcomere. Okay, whoops, what has happened there? Sarcomere. Got away with it. Right, okay. And this is capable of contracting, basically, because what will happen is when you stimulate uh, the sarcomeres to begin contracting, so calcium goes up and this causes the sarcomere to begin contracting, what will happen is these myosin filaments will start trying to pull, well, they'll start interacting with the actin filaments, and they'll start trying to pull the actin filaments towards the M disc. So the myosin filaments on this side will pull all of these actin filaments in this direction, and therefore the Z disc will be pulled towards the M disc. And in this direction, this on this side, these myosin filaments here will try and pull these actin filaments and this M disc in this direction, again towards the M disc. So what's going to happen is that you're overall going to bring these two M discs closer together, and that's how uh, the sarcomere is going to contract. Now, we'll continue this discussion in the next video.